Welcome back to another episode of Exponential Africa. Today we are very fortunate to have Aaron Frank, who is Singularity University's principal faculty on augmented reality and virtual reality. Aaron Frank is also a writer, researcher, and prolific thought leader around the future of business and innovation. Aaron's articles have appeared in VAS, in, in Wired Magazine, and in Forbes. Aaron, thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. So tell us a little bit about what does your role entail as principal faculty at Singularity University for AR and VR? Yeah, sure. So I spend my time full time at, at Singularity University headquarters in California, where I have an office. Uh, and, and mainly I'm researching, writing about, uh, speaking on topics related to augmented virtual reality, how companies can use them, uh, how these technologies are reshaping our technology landscape, uh, and, and mainly through, through my process of writing, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach myself and then teach others about what's happening in the, in the space. I mean, it's such an exciting space. I think there's this whole talk about this AR cloud that, that, that you wrote about recently, and that is the, the whole, every physical object is going to have a digital copy. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this is, what I think, one of the most exciting topics in all of computing and all of technology today. Uh, so the term AR cloud, it you know may sound kind of uh, you know what are what are we referring to? Uh, so this is actually a term that was coined by two venture capitalists in Silicon Valley just within the, within the last year or so, uh, Ori Inbar, Matt Misnix from Super Ventures. Uh, but really, this this concept, the AR cloud, refers to this idea that many companies today are working to build essentially a digital copy, a a a one to one digital map of everything in the in the real world. So you could think of it as like a digital twin uh, for for the entire planet that exists in real time. Uh, all of the human activity, machine activity in the world constantly updated in this digital map. And with this map, we'll be able to layer augmented reality content over the top of this digital map. And, and that will basically allow us to build this this future filled with augmented reality that we think of when we you know, picture this future coming. And these digital copies will obviously have a value attached to them. They're going to, be, they're going to have real value attached to, to this digital world. Well, it depends on how we use this digital copy. So I think what's exciting about it is it's, it's basically a tool that will enable developers to build concepts over the top of this world. And, and right now, I think it's still such early days that we don't really know what the most useful applications may be. Uh, you know, probably one of the, you know, the easiest ways to think about something that might rely on something like this that people are familiar with is something like Pokemon Go. The idea that you can connect, I mean, this is a game, obviously, uh, but imagine in the future, uh, businesses being able to store information about their company, you know, not on some web page somewhere, but right on the physical retail store themselves. Um, you know, you can you can think you can imagine. You know, we could have a conversation for a while about all of the ways that you could, you know, layer various kinds of information to the physical world in, in interesting ways. I mean, we're seeing it even with the kids of, of, of today. The kids grow up; they're growing up in these digital and in, in these virtual worlds as as their first contact with the outside world. So they, it's completely natural. It's completely normal. And some of the kids these days are saying. Instead of buying me a pair of new sneakers for my birthday, can't you get me the sneakers in Fortnite? Yeah, that's and, a great. And buy me my Fortnite sneakers. So yeah. they, they really value this digital world. That's a really interesting example. Fortnite, I think, is actually a really great way to explain you know, a concept that many people might be familiar with of what an online virtual world in the future might, might be. Um, I don't know if you saw a few weeks ago, did you see... Uh, the concert, yeah. yeah. Wow, this is incredible. 10 million people at a concert. If you didn't hear about this, uh, a, a DJ, uh, Marshmallow, performed a concert in Fortnite, and like you said, 10 million people showed up to this. And what's interesting about that is you could think of Fortnite, I, I mean, many people notice, you know, know Fortnite as the very straightforward game that it is. It's a shooter game. But more than that, it's really becoming like an online social space. And I think what's really important to note is that beyond the, the gaming application, because gaming is a, you know, it's, it doesn't really change the world in significant ways, but what's happening with these online gaming environments is that the, we're, we're doing real cultural activities inside these worlds. And I think the, the Fortnite concert, I mean, that was, had nothing to do about gaming. That was an entertainment event. Imagine an online world you know, built for education, built for 
uh, you know, get, getting groups of people together to actually spend time in these online worlds. And I think Fortnite, as a kind of a weird, interesting way, demonstrates how these spaces you know, are starting to become less games and more social spaces. I mean, you talk a lot about that, about how the AR and VR is creating a new layer of social in our lives. And a lot of those kids that, were, that attended that concert, that was the first concert they'd ever seen. Yeah, I mean, when, it, when is a, like a nine-year-old kid ever going to be at a nightclub to see a, an electronic music DJ? Like that's, you know. Yeah, and now their first experience is them standing in front of their screen and partying with their, their friends or exactly. their family yeah. and, and people in the digital world. So that's completely normal and natural to them. And, and what's fascinating is that they'll have grown up with this just intuitive way of spending time in these virtual worlds. And, and, and what's, what's interesting, part of my research looks at the ways that these virtual worlds will start to spill into business environments. Uh, there's already, for example, a company in the United States. They have 12,000 employees. They're publicly traded. Their market cap last year crossed a billion dollars. Ironically, it's a real estate company. But this company doesn't have a single physical office in the real world. The entire company office space exists in an online virtual campus. So that means if you get hired by this company, you show up to work on the first day, you go into this online virtual world on your computer. So imagine a kid today who's nine years old, you know, their parents might say, oh, none of those skills are gonna relate to the real world. But in the future, we may be spending you know, more of our professional time and lives in these online spaces as well. And those, you know, those are skill sets that will have just been you know, a naturally you know, developed part of their experience growing up. I mean, it's incredible. And probably a lot of the actual jobs of the future are going to be building and using visual uh, representations of, 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 of coding languages, for example. So the kids are actually going to be building in these virtual and augmented worlds. Yeah, and, and so for example, there's one platform called Sansar, which is made by the company uh, behind Second Life. So if anyone's familiar with Second Life, it was a massive phenomenon 15 years ago. All of these virtual worlds, none of them are built by Sansar or Second Life. They're built by users themselves. And so people that have the ability, like you, like you say, to be able to build and construct these online worlds will have you know, a, an ability to you know, create economic output, to have jobs, to uh, you know, find a place in the world in, in, in interesting ways. Thanks so much, Aaron, for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and appreciate uh, we look that. forward to reading a lot more of your articles and, and your research around augmented and virtual reality. And uh, watch this space. It really is going to change all our lives. Really appreciate Thanks that. Thanks so much. Thanks. Awesome.